Hello and welcome. My name's Karen O'Connor and you're listening to the amazing Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood. I'm here today with Robert Grimes from Love Life Matters. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Robert, because yeah. you're opening yourself up here, I've got to say. <laughs> Just kudos to you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Thanks for, for allowing me to come on your podcast. I'm I'm actually privileged, I think, and I feel blessed that I'm here. I, love I might feel a little bit. I might feel a little bit different afterwards after we finish, but at the moment, I'm here and I'm present. <laughs> so the reason for all this hilarity is Robert has agreed to come on here to talk about his experiences, or one of the things to talk about his experiences of what it's like to be a partner to a woman going through menopause. Because we we were having a conversation about it the other week. <laughs> And we were talking about, I said, you know, it's got to be really difficult for the partners in our lives and particularly the men. If You know, if you've got a female partner, a little bit different, they, they're going to get where you're coming from. But you poor guys have got no idea who's going to get out of bed in the morning sometimes or who's going to look up from the cup of tea when you've disturbed them, whatever they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was asking you, how did you cope with that? What was it like for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, initially, I, I, I would probably say I'm. I was shocked. I, I, I was, I was like, oh, who, who am I with right now? Who am I with this morning? Who have I woken up with? And, and I go, uh, uh, um, okay. And I'm, and me being a man, it's not always a man, but I'm trying to figure it all out up here. I'm going, okay, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, who is it? Yeah, oh, it's it's my wife. Um, and, uh, and, and then I go, well, what, what part of her am I with at the moment or what part isn't here at the moment that I'm, that I'm trying to connect with? And, uh, and, well, initially that was challenging because I, I just didn't know. I didn't. What I would say is I didn't have the tools or the skills to actually be present with that. And when I say that, I say that respectfully. I say the the behaviour or the intention of my wife at that moment and it threw me. I, I've just gone, yeah. And sometimes I would have, I'd have this look on my face going a bit like this. I go... Uh, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit now, but it was like, and in that moment of that, I'm trying to figure it all out. So I don't necessarily do that anymore. However, my brain does want to go back to that every now and then, but I don't try and figure it out. I, the best I can, I try and be present with it. Just be there. <laughs> I hope that made sense because it, it makes, makes sense complete to me. sense. Yeah, it, it's because and the the thing that was coming up for me. Did you have any idea of what to expect before perimenopause started? And you've been married for a long time, haven't you? You've been with um, Foxy for a long time. No, I haven't. Okay. Oh no, no. This is only like four and a half years. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So now that's another topic. You know, I have had other marriages, but however, we're not going on to that right yet. So <laughs> we'll stay with we'll stay with this marriage at the moment. <laughs> so, so, how long into the relationship was it when Foxy started getting the menopausal symptoms? Yeah, I, look, I would say it was probably six months or eight months. Now, the challenge about all of that is that also connects into stages in a relationship. So if you know what I mean, that we can have this falling in love stage, we can have this, some people call it the romantic stage, and that could last, I say this with a bit of humour, that can last two hours or two years that stage so there was a bit of that happening at that time which means that we were changing in our relationship we were becoming more committed in the relationship 
and the rose-coloured glasses was going off our perception of each other, which is normal to happen. But then when there's the menopause stuff going on at the same time, uh, yeah, that's that sort of threw me quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any idea what to expect? Um, no, no idea. <laughs> I, I No, I could only sort of try and have a concept up here, of course, around what it is going to be like. However, that didn't do any good, <laughs> having that. So what were your expectations of, of a woman going through or, or what it was like for a woman to go through menopause? Is the reality different to the expectation? Um, loaded yeah. question there. Look, <laughs> These are all yeah. loaded questions. I'm going to apologise right now yes. because you're probably going to dig yourself into a massive hole here. Yes. <laughs> so much from it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We both could dig ourselves into a hole. <laughs> And then we might get buried together anyway. I'm, yes, look, I did have some expectations, meaning like I, I somehow wanted my wife to own what was going on for her emotionally and hormonally. And I know it's very hard to separate hormonal and emotional things because they come one in one when we have our chemistry in our body that's changing. And then that changes our emotions that go on. I know that in myself, right? I'm not talking about maybe maybe I'm talking about manopause if I talk about myself. But um, it's yeah, it was really hard to say, hey, what what expectations do I have here, and then try and put them onto my wife, put it into a box, and say, can you do? can you tell me this, this, this and this when this, this and this happens or is going to happen? Can you warn me? Can you let me know? Can you, when you wake up in the morning, tell me very succinctly how you're feeling and what your mood is and what's going to happen today? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, that'd be nice. That's ideal for me. However, it doesn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way and it still doesn't happen that way. <laughs> a friend of mine did have warnings for a family. So if she was feeling particularly rubbish, she'd literally walk out the bedroom and go, I am not fit for human consumption today. And she'd walk back in again. And she'd had all those conversations with the family prior to that and said, look, if I come out and say this, stay away from me. If you get in my way, get out of the way really quickly and just don't take on board anything that I might say that day. And then, But then that's literally all she can say and then she's got to go away and deal with herself because she knows she's, she's just not going to be herself that yeah, day. Yeah. But it's very hard in that situation yeah. to do that because that's the last thing you want to do because what you want to do is for somebody to do something so that you can just get at them and just tell them what you think of them, yeah. not necessarily making any sense. Yeah, the, the, and the challenge with all of that and what's just come up for me is that if I, I think of my background or my history when I was younger and as a child, so whenever my wife would say something, there was, and she was sort of sharing, but it might have included me, however, I was taking it personally and that was because of my past and my past upbringing and whatever, which can be a little bit unusual or maybe not. But as a man, I was quite sensitive and I am sensitive now, like emotionally sensitive or, you know, my nervous system is sensitive and I need to be aware of how I regulate that. That is my gift and my curse being in this male body. So when I, when I think of my wife and when she says something and it's almost it's directed, it's directing straight at me, I need to go, I need to tell myself, this is not about me. This is not about me. Even though my name is being mentioned, this is not about me. This is about my wife. And I, and I may say there's this part of her that's coming out in, in the menopause right now that is just a different part of her. And if I can just stay with that and don't take it personally, I think I'm going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
must live to see another day. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah. How so, is your – so tell me, first of all, a little bit about your background because you actually do do relationship work and you were also telling me just before we started and I went, oh, we, we need to talk about that. You've started <laughs> looking at energy healing stuff. How has – Tell me a bit about your background and how that has actually helped, if it has. It could have hindered <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> there's a fair chance that it's hindered with, yeah. in regards to dealing with all this and how you've dealt with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, when I, when I think of myself as a boy, um, I, and, and what happened was, I'll do this very quickly, but it's very significant about who I am and how I've, actually changed but the journey to get there to change if that makes sense that I was sensitive as a boy at at primary school I was sensitive which means I was good at drawing and painting I was I was good at doing those creative things but also I was good at cricket and soccer and and tennis and those sports etc and so I could say in a cricket term, I was a good all rounder when I was younger in in things. But what happened was when I the first day I got to high school, something kicked in in me when I saw all those older boys and I was huddled in this corner at high school. And I looked up at these other boys and I said to myself, I need to harden up here, otherwise I'm not going to survive. I am going to be bullied. And so I put this mask and this armour on of all this other part of me that I allowed to be there when I was at primary school. And so I carried that all the way through pretty much until my first marriage ended at 33 years old. And I know that well because then once that marriage ended, I was like I would, what I would say is in those those twenties of mine in relationship in marriage, I was, I had this mask and armor on, right? And uh, and and by the way, when I was sixteen, around sixteen, fifteen, and sixteen, because I wasn't expressing this other part of me in this boy becoming a male body, I actually got suicidal. Because I couldn't, I didn't want to express this part of me, this other part of me, this creative side of me, this this dancing side of me, this, if you want to call it this softer side of me, which was there. And it's always been there, but I actually um, put this mask and armour over it and then I became very successful back then as an electrical contractor, as an electrician and as a tradie still with this mask and this armour on. And then at 33, when my marriage ended, ooh, I needed to go back and explore and open up this other part of me as a man, right? I didn't have to let go of this harder side. I didn't have to let go of this worry. I didn't have to let go of all of that. I just needed to bring in and integrate this softer part of me because, you know, I'm a man and I've got a heart as well. So that journey then took me out of being an electrical contractor, personal growth, of course, and I connect that with spiritual growth. And so then I started, I did Lifeline course, and then I went to uni and I did training and a whole degree on counselling and psychotherapy and ended up right now ended up in doing couples relationship counselling and and all the dynamics that play out in that and I help others. So that's that's what I do now. I, I do couples and relationship counselling and I do groups. I do education around relationship dynamics and, of course, same sex as well. Those dynamics can play out with things that have happened in that those couple or sometimes the relationships are more than two. So we need to remember these days that relationships can be more than two 
around that. And I'm actually talking about intimate love sexual relationships. So now I I have no idea and I've never been in a more than two in a relationship, myself and someone else. I think for me that's challenging enough, let alone adding a third or a fourth person in that mix, if that makes sense. So that's what I do now is couples and relationship counselling. I'm also moving into energy work, and that is another topic. But, however, I'm working now with couples with the energy that's underneath the emotions. We, we cannot discount our emotional states, and that's including us men, because every human being is an emotional being. We have feelings and sensations, and those feelings and sensations are in our body. And I help men to actually get into their body. I help women as well. But I help men to get into their body because our body is our clue to our emotional states. If we stay up here, it'll lead us astray. And I'm passionate about that work. And I'm passionate about it because in my early years in the 20s, up until 33, I would say I was hopeless in relationships. I didn't know how to communicate effectively because I didn't know who I was. I wasn't being true to who I was. So how can I be true to somebody else with all of that? So that's that's how I've come about doing this. And uh, it's lovely to be alive and be passionate about what I do. Karen, yeah. It is, isn't it? So, so, and, And it is wonderful, the work you do. And that was something that I did want to talk to you about as well how did it help you did it help you at all in dealing with uh, or coping with and dealing with your own emotions that which is where I was going your own reactions and keeping a relationship going at a good level with your wife because you know the relationship can stagger along or it can go along quite nicely how did your background help you with that and all of those things that you've just said what yep. impact did that all have? Yep, yep. The, the important thing that I need to learn about myself, that I am an emotional being, right? I am, I'm in a male body, but I have emotions. And the important thing is that, that I have some traumas and hurts from my past, from my childhood. I also have all this social and cultural conditioning of being in this male body and I've learned now to let go of some of that conditioning right that but that's challenging it's so so challenging younger men are doing it a little bit better than men my age so you know I yeah I got I got the gray hairs to um prove that that it's it's because we were taught to be stoic we were taught to be tough And anything else wasn't necessarily to do with being a man. It was a bit wussy, if you want to call it. So I no longer take that on anymore. But that's been a journey to be able to integrate both of those. And I, I use it. I can be, I use archetypes. So I use the archetypes of leader, lover, warrior and mystic. And so I can be a warrior, but I can also integrate my lover, which is the the more compassionate, sensitive, sensual self, that's a word that us men don't use very often, sensual self about who I am as a man. But it doesn't mean I have to leave the warrior out, the warrior. I like bringing my peaceful warrior in, which says, uh, hey, set a boundary here. This is the way it needs to be. But then I can be there with compassion and care right we need to have both of those and we need to um, integrate them at the same time also just to bring the warrior in or sometimes leave the warrior leave him out and just bring in the lover and bring in that and be present with that psyche part of me of the lover present with the other so it's a journey (laughs) journey Karen yeah so is that what's 
is that when your wife is having a moment, a menopause moment, let's call it that. And I don't mean to be patronising or yes. downplay anything. I'm, I'm talking yep. as someone who still goes through all that. So yeah. Is yep. that some when you have that frightened deer expression on your face when you're not entirely sure who you're dealing with at the moment, is that what's going through your mind? Okay, who do I need to be to deal with this? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say in the archetypes, the lover, all the lover has to do, that all that part of me has to do is to be present right there. I might need the warrior to dodge some of the arrows that come my way, right? The, uh, the, the warrior might need to go, you know, like metaphorically and, uh, and let it go past, right? Because if, I, if it hits me, then I react, <laughs> yep. and, which means that I'm either, yeah, I would, you know, can be annoyed, I can be angry, but underneath that I can actually be hurt or I can end up being sad because I'm I'm wanting to connect with my wife, but I've just reacted to what's going on for her. She's got her own reactions going on too. But but if I can just dodge that and then bring the lover back in and just be present, just be present with her, well then something shifts. Something shifts in both of us. <laughs> So do you do you have many guys or, or many do you see many couples for whom this is a problem? Uh, you, yes. However, most couples that come in to see me, and, and of course most are different sex, so it's a man and a woman. I do have same sex and they do come in. The dynamics are pretty much the same. However, then normally they can be men and women like in their 30s, maybe 40s, which is possibly pre-menopausal. So there's things that happen there with them, and, and I know I'm not going off topic here, but the biggest issue that happens in relationships is our own trauma and hurts that have happened in our past. So we could call that baggage coming in from a past relationship or from childhood. That is big. That is big. And then, Karen, when you think of that and you're still carrying that and you're in a relationship and then menopause appears, whoa, it throws in the other mix as well. It throws in that, all the that hormonal change that happens. So that's that can be very challenging. So when that does happen, then I help that, that couple if, if that's going on. And I will support them through exactly what I said about what I need to do with my wife. So it's interesting. Now, the, the thing also that I will tell the woman, and I'll be very sensitive and caring about how I do this, um, if she can actually prepare the best she can, prepare her husband, her partner, if that day or that week is going to be, if you want to call it a bit of a shocker, because that certainly helps. It's like as soon as that woman has an idea of what's going to happen, whether it's connected with menopause, whether it's connected with her moon cycle, it's really good to know that for herself but then prepare her partner to say, hey, sweetheart, this is what's possibly going to happen this week. <laughs> I think um, that's right and that's one of the things that I wanted to achieve out of doing the podcast is not just because menopause actually it's not something that is necessarily discussed openly we're starting to discuss it more mm. but it's still an almost taboo behind whispered hands kind of thing it's that kind yep. of topic it's not a freely spoken topic yeah but if you think about or, or if I think about it to me you got your teenage years where you just go mental because of all these hormones raging yes. 
Yeah, yeah. But then menopause is the other end of it. The only problem is you are way more experienced now and you can use those weapons to much better effect. Yes. There's not a lot of slamming doors and there's a lot more death. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and yep. it's something that needs to be communicated to our partners because if I think about it, it's like, wow, I wonder how many relationships actually break up at this time of life because the woman's going through menopause, the guys have got no idea, the woman's got no idea what to expect. Yep. Yep. I, I had no clue what I was going to go through or what I was going to experience. You know, I went to the doctor and said, I'm not sleeping very much and I feel really down. She gave me antidepressant sleeping tablets, said yep. I'll probably all right in a few years never told me anything else yes and yep. that's really sad I don't want other women to go through that and I've been fortunate enough like your wife is my husband's just kind of gone he's just let it slide it's not about him she's just doing whatever she's doing okay I'll just wait till until it's done and, and he's been absolutely brilliant yes. but it's got to cause a lot of stress in relationships and it needs to be something that is understood as there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. And who your wife was beforehand, the real her will come out afterwards and she'll be way better because she's not going to have any of those stresses about what other people think or any of that kind of stuff. They'll all be gone. So yep. you'll have the real her at the end of it. Yep. But there's just this little phase where it's not going to be very pleasant sometimes that we're going to go yes. through to get there. So yep. what's your view on all that that I've just I took over the podcast then what's your view on all that <laughs> <laughs> oh Karen I agree with you it's like when it comes to hormonal things and I'm not talking I can only talk about women from my experience from my wife and also just what I've read or what I've learned about menopause that's it so it's a disclaimer there I'm not talking about it that I could you know I can talk about what goes on for women in that hormonal stage however it's just the emotions come up it's they come up and they want to come out they want to be expressed now if that's in menopause and it's just the chemistry that's trying to change then just allow them to come out right yeah, I get you. As long as, you know, as long as that woman hasn't literally got a gun or a bow and arrow in their hands, because it it, it might get triggered. However, it's it's like, and I'll say that metaphorically, right? So it's about just being present with those. And as I said before about myself, just for the partner, just to let them go past. So that's where the energy comes in. All that is is those words or that behaviour when the woman is speaking out of or acting out of menopause, just let that energy go past. Don't take it on. Just let it go past because that's released then from them. It's released. My partner loves, she loves making noises and screaming and she loves dancing and moving and both of that she I, she'll be okay for me saying that but it was even this morning she sort of woke up and this is funny I'm lying beside my gorgeous wife and she's there going oh, I, and all I did is put my hand over and I do it. In the morning, I just put my hand over and I just, I'm checking in with her. And then if she's receptive, I will just turn towards her and then we'll just go in and embrace in bed and have a cuddle. And some mornings that might not happen. And I've got used to that's okay. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> the energy that's there, there's so much of this is happening on this planet right now and it's time. It's time for us to understand our energy. And the big picture of it all, and this might shock some people, is that we as humans, we are just energy consolidated into this physical form 
and then we have this energy that runs through us and that creates emotions. And then when that energy gets stopped or blocked or the circuitry in the body not working, and there's many different things can that bring that up. That can be hormonal, right? That can be things from our past, from our traumas and other things. And we have a blockage or have a circuitry of that energy not running and that's where the emotions come from and that's where physical pain comes from and that's where dis-ease comes from in our body. I bring that back and I work with that couple or that individual around understanding that and I have processes around doing that. But the first thing is to get into the body and the sensations in the body. So if it's a woman with menopause and there's hormonal things going on, all of that's good. If you don't take that away or you don't tell them to get rid of it, come back into the body, feel where that is happening in the body. Feel it because that's the key to creating the circuitry a bit more in the body. And then there's different processes to be able to do that. So that's just what I wanted to maybe finish this off with, Karen. That's actually really fascinating because where my brain went as you were saying it and you kind of said it, because when we all get to a certain age, men or women, it's just that women, we've got the menopause to kind of pinpoint it. But when we all get to a certain age, we stop worrying about what other people think. We kind of let go of the requirements to be a certain way, to think and act a certain way. We yep. we let go of that a lot more yep. and we become freer to be ourselves more. Yes. And I'm just wondering how much, this is where my mind went, how much of menopause is to do with releasing all that stuff and that's how it occurs in women because it does all come up during menopause and that is yes. one of the the emotional things is like oh I wish I hadn't done that 20 years yep. ago or I don't want to do this anymore or all the frustrations you're like right okay that's it I'm not doing this anymore you know I'm not being a mother you can go and look after yourselves now yep. it's all that kind of stuff that goes on yep yep I wonder how much that is tied in with the physical physical manifestations of menopause and that it's actually an energetic thing as well the yep. two are tied in together that's where I went when you were talking and you did kind of point to that too yeah 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 so just to maybe to finish it off around that how I see it so I, I'm not necessarily going to talk about menopause but I talk about biology or the or the chemistry in the body so the physical chemistry in the body So that's with anyone, that's with an adolescent, that's with the other things that happen, with things that go on in our body when we get diseases, like when there's something going on in our body and it changes that chemistry. It's then getting that energy back into that area in the body. And when we think of menopause, I guess we are talking about the women's reproductive area as well as the rest of the body, my heart is part of that. And we have we have these energy centers in our bodies. And the best thing to do, many people have probably heard, you know, heard of just meditation, right? There's many forms of that, but breathing, doing breath work into that area in the body. So if it's down in that root chakra area for women or for men, there's just something going on there. That can create and move through that physical hormonal stuff that's going on where there's some chemicals are changing in the body, it will help. That energy and that breath work will help that. It's not the only thing because we need to address it physically as well, but our physical manifestation is created by our energy. So that's the important thing to remember about that. It's been proven epigenetics and our quantum physics has proven this around the energy of our body, our physical body, but the energy that's in our body and the energy that's around our body. And that energy around our body is just another layer of this physical body that we have. And that's all been proven by science. So it's wonderful to be able to work with people in that area. 
Robert, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on and being so open. Yes. (laughs) You didn't dig a hole. You're all right. (laughs) (laughs) I won't need... I won't need to crawl back out. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, so, I'll, yeah. I'll ju- it's just, we'll finish this off. My wife may have heard some of what I've said here this afternoon, so uh, it'll be interesting, my um, conversation with her, if she's open to have a conversation right now after I finish this. <laughs> so, well, she'll be on my podcast in a few weeks as well, yeah, so I'll ask her. Yes, yes. She's working with women around body stuff and her own archetypes. So, yeah, it would be wonderful if she could um, jump on. Yeah. Yep. I'm so interested to talk to her. Yeah. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks, uh, Karen. You're welcome. Head on over to the website for more information about this episode and more information about my guests. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll love you forever. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next week. Bye.